listening to the Steady On Stronger Together podcast. I am your host, Angie Ballman. Friends, I'm going to tell you right from the start that the conversation you are about to hear was so powerful for me. My guest is Kelly Kirstein, founder of Chicks Ministry, a program that encourages young girls to find their identity in Christ and live from that truth. I was and continue to be inspired by Kelly's passion, her willingness to step out in obedience, and her confidence both in God's call and the way he's gifted her to serve. Her ministry journey has not been without obstacles, but seldom have I been in the presence of someone who has so decidedly set her face in the direction God is leading her. Let's listen in. Good morning, Steady On community. Welcome to this week's Stronger Together Conversation. I'm Angie Bauman, and I'm delighted to welcome our guest this week is Kelly Kirstein from Iowa, who has a ministry called Chicks Ministry. And uh, we are going to dive into what Kelly is doing and um, what was the motivation for it and who she's reaching. And I have just been really looking forward to this. Kelly and I had a chance to talk on the phone last week or week before and spent a few minutes together. And um, I just, um, I just love your heart, Kelly. I love your, um, just the, the work, the passion that you put into this. And I know this is really going to be a blessing. So first and foremost, thank you for your time today. Um, and just for sharing with us a little bit about what it is that you're doing. And so I just want to, I'm going to give just a little bit of information on Kelly. Um, she, her ministry, as I said, is called Chicks Ministry. And, um, and that, that's an acronym, right? Just tell us what the acronym is. Yes. So yeah. Christ's hands, influence, confidence, kindness, and self-control. Christ's hands influence confidence, huh? kindness, self-control. You know what? I almost want to pause right there because what are those three things? Why are they so important to you that they're part of like just the essence of your ministry? Confidence, kindness, self-control. Talk about that just a second before we even move on, if you will. Absolutely. Uh, you know, so it's funny because God is the one that gave me the vision for the ministry as he usually does. But when, um, so when I felt led to do a group, it, it really just came from like, all right, God, I, I need a name. So uh -huh. chick came into my mind as I was praying about it. And then that, those were the words that kind of gave me the picture of what he wanted me to do. Um, when getting started is to help them not so much build confidence in themselves, but confidence in who they are yeah. in Christ, um, to teach them to, you know, be in Jesus presence, which then leads to kindness, you know, being shared in their lives. And then also really focusing on self-control and making good decisions and things so that they, you know, kind of start building a solid foundation for themselves. I think that what you're saying is so central because uh, it, it kind of goes back for me to, I think of identity, like from where we get our yeah. identity or our filling or our confidence, like that is, um, it, everything depends on that. Everything flows from that. And if I have spent so much time, um, try, and I still do, uh, to a certain degree, trying to get my filling or my affirmation from outside things, which can, it's like subtle because it works for a little while. Right. Or it pretends like it works. Right. And so it's just enough. It's a half truth, if you will, just enough that it'll like keep you in the hustle. Um, but, but I, I have, I'm learning and have learned that when that affirmation, uh, that, uh, confidence comes from an internal relationship with Jesus Christ, then the world can change and that doesn't change. And so it's just a powerful goal, um, to, for your, your group to have, to really say, I would like to help you learn this at a younger age. Cause I'm 45. I'm still, <laughs> I'm still learning it. Yeah. So, uh, so Kelly's from Clarion, Iowa. She's wife to Kent and mom of three and chicks ministry is what I use the word global, um, because a missionary friend taught me that cause it, it's a combination of global and local that may, you may not put that, uh, uh, label on your ministry, but as soon as we talked about it, I'm like, Oh, this is a global ministry. Cause she has very much she has a community program with girls that are really close to you um, geographically. But then um, if you follow Kelly on Instagram with the Chicks Ministry, I was looking even just earlier today, you have over 7,000 followers from all over the world, literally, right? Yes. Um, yeah, who are encouraged through your ministry and by what you are doing. And so um, with everything she does, the goal is to help young girls encounter Jesus and live from his presence encounter Jesus and live from his, live from that, like, 
that li- living water, right? That, that thing that never dries up inside us, that love and grace of Jesus Christ. So um, talk to us a little bit about what Chicks Ministry is and how it began, if you will. Give us some history. So I used to be a teacher uh, and I actually have a master's degree in administration. My plan was to be a school principal. And back in 2007, I had just a really rough year. Um, we had five family funerals. I had a miscarriage got pregnant again, started to miscarry again, and just kind of had that breaking moment with God in the emergency room of if I keep this baby, I kind of knew he, I would know he had different plans for me. And if not, then that was going all in in my career. And I really don't even know why I put it that way in that moment, but there must've been something that was working in me. So anyway, the, it, I literally was only 12 weeks pregnant with what I was going through. It, the babies never survived. Like even the perinatologist told me it had to have been an act of God that my mm. third child made it here. And so that was when I was like, all right, I give. I, I mean, I always had gone to church, but I had never really fully surrendered. I kind of mm-hmm. was building my identity on, mm-hmm. you know, I had a master's degree by 24. It was that career path. That's how I was building myself up was through, you know, success and all these things. So anyway, fast forward and so I quit my job right after my third child was born at the end of 2007 and in early 2008 was when I first got the vision for, um, I didn't know it then, but just Mm -hmm. that I needed to start a group for um, young people was all I kind of got a vision for and 180 was what I got, you know, kind of heard in my head and, but I didn't really have any more than that. So I just started really digging into the word and praying and seeking God. And it didn't come until 2010. Uh, I was sitting at a women of faith conference and the revolve tour, like a little promo came on the um, screen. And all of a sudden it was like, wham, you need to take girls to Kansas city to this. um, And you need to start a group. And so I went home and having been a teacher you know, I just, they, I asked, can I come in during lunch and invite girls to join, um, group and God gave me the name chicks and then just told them about going to Kansas city to the revolve tour. And they came like, I got, I just got started. 20 girls came right off the, the bat. And I really had no idea what I was doing. People would ask me questions like, what are you gonna do with this? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. know. Yeah. I I started in a a checking account with a hundred bucks in my own money. (laughs) And and my ministry got started. I mean, seriously, I had a hundred dollars and we started actually in the library in our, in my community, because I knew part of what God wanted me to do. It wasn't, I wasn't starting a group just for girls that went to church. It was yes. just mm-hmm. girls that needed, you know, like somebody to love them and, and to understand them. And so, yeah, I, I work with just as many girls that don't attend church as that do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love that. And I think sometimes that is such a, um, like a common thing when there's a heart ministry, a heart stirring, a vision, as you put it, a leading from the Lord. He doesn't often, this has been my experience, give us too many steps down the road. Sometimes he's not going to be like, here's $10,000 seed money. Here's right. a complete plan laid out, right? You saw one advertisement. You had a, a little meeting, I would suggest, like with a few girls yeah. and you loaded them up and something started with a hundred dollars and really just a heart to be like, I think think this is what God wants me to do. And I just say that as encouragement, because sometimes I know I've I've been in ministry long enough. I've talked to people throughout the years that have, they have that stirring Kelly, right. And they're like, well, I can't see how this would actually work out. And so sometimes we squelch the spirit because we don't have enough details. And I really feel so much like there's such a blessing when we take that little step and we watch God make the way for the next step and we, you, you know, and, um, and so, you know, when we feel that stirring, I think it's so important to just be like, I think this is what you want because he'll, he, he'll take care of helping us get there. Right. Yeah. Tell, I don't even know what, what was Revolve like then when you took 20, 20 girls to oh, Revolve. Okay. <laughs> it was amazing. Was it? Okay. Oh, oh my goodness. And parent, like we just, I, you know, we just loaded up and I had moms volunteer. We, I lined, I actually ended up, so this is the, my favorite part of the story at the women of faith that day, I went to the meeting about Revolve. I signed up for $500 worth of tickets to take girls, like not even having a group. I had no idea how I was going to pay for it. It's just what I felt like I was (laughs) supposed to do. And I ended up applying for this grant and 
so I had 10 tickets for $500. Well, then there were 20 people that wanted to go. So all of a sudden I had to get more than a thousand dollars worth of tickets because I wanted to like whoever wanted to go. I was just, not yeah. God. so I get the bill the day I get the bill in the morning. I'm like, Oh no, my husband's going to kill me. Like, cause we're like, <laughs> pay for this. <laughs> I get that. So that was in the morning that afternoon at like one o'clock in the afternoon, the mail comes and I get the letter that the grant came through and that I got $2,000 to take these girls, um, to the revolve tour. So not only did we, could we pay for the tickets? It was the hotel rooms. They got t-shirts. We paid for their meal. I mean, like the whole thing, it was just even more. And I was like, that was when I just was like, all right, God, you know, I'm just going to trust you. Like, I have really no idea what I'm doing, but you just, I'm just going to trust you to just take me step by step. And I think he's so good to us in that. Like when we do take those steps out, I believe that he will use some tangible things to affirm these are the right steps, you know, and when we got it, but we got to live in that middle just for a little while, believing that I'm not sure what I'm doing, but I really have this sense that you're leading me this way. And so I'm trying, he honors, I believe this. What do you think, Kelly? He honors hearts that are trying to please him and honor him. And he's not going to yell at us if we get it a little bit wrong. He'll just lovingly read direct us right because we're just yeah. like I think this is what you want that's good enough for him <laughs> I just believe exactly that. <laughs> you get credit for that really your heart is yeah. you're trying that's what I always I've learned through the journey is the fact that this I say God this is what I feel like you want me to do so I'm going to do this and I yeah. feel like you get yes. credit because your heart is trying to do as well. It's, yes. Yeah. Your heart is pure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So the goal is, uh, as I said, to help young girls encounter Jesus and live from his presence. And so just talk a little bit, what does that mean to you in your life right. to encounter Jesus and live from his presence? What do you hope that means for the girls that you're working with? So I think through my own journey and then having worked with kids, I recognize that so often we build, as you were talking about identity around like things we're gifted at or, you know, in intellect or whatever it is, the things in our lives. And, but that's actually a really shaky way to build your life. And so when something goes wrong or you like in sports, you get hurt or, you know, things all of a sudden you're just completely destroyed and, and, it, and you're, you're trying to promote yourself and you get, you get in this cycle of you just can never be enough, you know, and you just feel so terrible about yourself and weaknesses are horrible. And so what I, and it, some of it is the reason the passion comes from, because I've learned it in my own journey of like the sense of relief and peace when it's like, uh, you know what I can, when I live from the presence of God, recognizing that my relationship with him and the way he created me is enough. Like I just was born with value and now I just need to take the journey to learn how to live, you know, out his purposes and his plans that when I make mistakes, I just go to him and he helps me figure it out. Like, and my gifts are a wonderful tool, but they aren't, you know, I don't have to prove my worth through being amazing at things. Mm -hmm. And it's just, that's really what I want to teach them that you were born enough. You were born valuable and just walk out the journey and love yourself. Cause then it overflows onto other people. That's right. I wrote that down when you were talking, because I want to remember it. I was just born with value. I think we really struggle to believe that about ourselves. Ooh, um, I, don't, I won't speak for men cause I don't, but I know the women that I work with, we really struggle mm-hmm. to believe that about ourselves. And then when we're trying to do it in our gifts and our resources and our own talent, whatever that is going to fail us at some point. And then it feels like, I think, especially to young girls, it's like my life is over because this is who I was, right? I was soccer or I was the singer or I was something. And then you don't progress in that or something happens or whatever. And then it like shakes everything in you. And I think that's just, it's so beautiful. And what you're saying is so true. When you believe that about yourself, I was just born with value. Then that can, then you have more to give you're, you're a better version of yourself. I'm a better version of myself. And so therefore I'm also a better wife and I'm a better mother and I'm a better friend because I believe in my inherent inherent. Is that the right word in Yeah. Value that's just there because yeah, because it is. Um, yeah. And so I would think that is that tough, a tough message to, for the girls to pick up in general, do you find that that's, um, that they struggle to believe that? 
So it's what I have found is, is that it's a journey to get them there. Sure. That the one that will stick with me because once they, and this, the local girls, really understand this I've done my ministry long enough that like once you get into like you come into chicks because I start locally in sixth grade on Instagram it's obviously just you know I I target my ads and things are 13 through 23 but once you start with me it's the journey so you're not going to get it immediately it's the walking it out together I have girls now since I've been doing this 10 years that you know, they've journeyed with me this whole time. And that's where the transformation comes. You can't just come get a shot in the arm or like a fast food restaurant. And then bam, you just get it and walk away. Usually Mm -hmm. it's, they have to journey um, with, they have, and I, you know, teaching them how to pray and come into relationship with God and to bust out of, we have such a picture, like our poor kids and even in society of what is, you know, accepted, like you, I feel like as teenagers, they feel like they need to be athletic. You've got to be a certain kind of pretty. You've got to have Mm. a certain type of intelligence and all these things. And so if you don't fit this little mold that people are telling you that this is what makes you valuable and you don't fit into that, then there's so many of them that, you know, have such low self-esteem and it's like, so it helped build the picture of what God has to say about the truth of who they are, the impact they can have. And it's, it really is, it's like something, the Holy Spirit just, I watch over and over, he just works in their heart. And when they start to get it, it it, it honestly just changes their life. And they, yeah, I don't, it's like my favorite thing to watch. Sure. Um, Yes, because it's, it's the reason, right? It's the reason that you do it because you want them to know that that value that they have. I appreciated what you said just a moment ago when you're like, I think most of us think we have to be amazing, right? There's this, like, you don't have to be amazing. Like, is it possible that you are amazing in this unique way, but there's gotta be this brain shift, this heart brain shift around what amazing is, because I think we look at other people's amazing, what we think is amazing. And we think, well, I'm not that, so I'm not amazing. But as you're saying that this process of believing in their value, that, that their worth comes from Jesus Christ, then there's like, I'm amazing because I'm created in his image, gifted uniquely yes. for, and there we're so uncomfortable with our uniqueness. And yet it's the most beautiful thing about us, but only when we can believe he gave it to us that way, I think, will we actually be able to utilize it in a way that really blesses other people. I was at a writer's conference one time and one of the speakers said, um, you have to let go of the idea that everything you write needs to be profound. And I, that stuck in my heart because I'm like, oh, that's not just true in writing. That's true. Like in my life, like what you're, you know, like everything, I, I, it doesn't need to be amazing. Like everything doesn't need to be amazing. And when I, when I need it to be, I'm always going to be disappointed in myself because I'm not going to be amazing all the time. There's just right. no way. Right. You can't and measure up to sometimes uh-huh. the standards we set for ourselves and then we feel defeated. hmm Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, talk to us a little bit about how the girls benefit from your ministry. What kinds of things are they facing? Um, what are you offering to them? Um, I know there's probably stories for hours. Um, what kind yeah. of circumstances, um, like behaviors that come from circumstances in their life, what, what describe for us some of the girls that benefit from what you're offering? So it, you know, I, I have, and I don't know why, I think I've just been gifted to work with teenagers because they always tell me like, I've never had anybody explain to me the things of faith, the way I do and the mm-hmm. way I put it. Um, because it's whether, you know, sometimes there's promiscuous behavior sure. and so all these labels heaped on them. And, and I just don't accept that. I, it's like, God gives me eyes to see past the, th- the actions and the things that they're doing and to who they really are. And so then through teaching scripture and, um, and then I have, I have all sorts of fun. I, I love to be creative with connecting with God. And so through doodle and faith and all these different ways of helping them kind of pull off the layers of defense mechanisms or, you know, things that have come out of their um, pain. Sometimes they're using substances and pulling off and really getting down into who they are. Um, God really calls me to, uh, you know, to share faith in a practical way of, you know, how to handle yourself in situations when a girl is saying unkind things to you and allowing the Holy Spirit to be the one to flow through so that you're not, you know, whipping her back and recognizing that, you know, the overflow of your heart, that if 
unkind things are coming out of your mouth, go and pray. Ask God, what's going on in here? You know, things like that of really accessing faith on a regular basis so that it's not like, you know, so often we can have the relationship where we go to church and we, you know, some of them and worship and, and learn a little bit about the Bible, but then we leave it behind and we live our week. Or some of them are really not even going to church at all, where I try to present it to them that what if this, you know, Jesus, this incredible power that's in your life that you used it throughout the day to really access to be the best version of yourself and that other people are encountering what you would want to encounter because of your relationship and the Holy Spirit working in you. And it it just... Yeah, it it really just works for them to begin to see that, you know, I've had girls that have made some really, you know, decisions have just destroyed themselves. I mean, honestly, because they're hurting so bad and then they let boys use them and they pick up, you know, drug use and things. And God just gives me the ability to build the picture of what would your life look like if you would let go of these things that are harming you so much and, and give them the hope that that's not who you are. Yeah. Like you can see. Yeah. It, it's a destructive pattern. Is it not? Because some, something has created some shame, I think. Right. Yeah. And then you use something else to try to cover that shame, which often creates more shame. Right. And so you yeah. use something else to try to numb or cover that shame. Um, and really the thing that breaks through, I always say shame cannot grow when it is brought to the light. Right. And so yeah. I, I hear you saying what you're trying to do is just shine that Jesus light on this place that like this dark place in your life and your heart. And then it's not too big for Jesus and scare Jesus. And I think you, I listened to you, you're such a beautiful representation of that because they can look at your eyes and say, it's not too much for Kelly. Like what if it's, if it's not too much, for Kelly, then I might believe it's not for Jesus. I can't put Kelly in my pocket and take her to school with me. Right. But I can put Jesus in, in me, you know, and call on that light. Um, when I feel like I might be tempted to go to something else I have seen on your page uh, recently, you put uh, several videos talking to the girls about suicide. Is that something that you talk a lot about, or is that like kind of a, I'm not sure if that's just like a recent uh, teaching that you're going through, or is that something that you really deal with a lot with these young girls? Well, it's twofold. So it's something that I think is just a constant um, battle that many teens face, even just suicidal thoughts and things. But there's also the way I decide like what the series is. It's usually mm-hmm. God lays on me that this is what, you know, okay. I mean, it's knows? time for this mm-hmm. one person, mm-hmm. but, um, you know, just talking about, because we don't realize how like these dark thoughts or, you know, even cutting or different things that yes. you're coming into agreement with things that aren't of God. And it, you know, and it actually the pull is greater than just ourselves. And so that's a part of like the suicidal things of trying to help girls recognize, like you've actually come into agreement with darkness when you've paired and you've gone down this path. And so it's a form of, you know, something that a lot of times we don't talk about in the church. And so just trying to help them to understand, like, this isn't just your thoughts, like you, this is bigger than you, and you've got to be careful. So it's warning them. But it's also if you've gone there, you know, here's some things to do. And I always, you know, let them know that and they do, they'll message me and ask for help, they ask for prayer, they and things. So yeah, because that darkness that you're saying that, you know, that you're in agreement with, that's, the, that's the lie of you're not amazing or you don't have value or the shame is too big for Kelly or for whoever the other Kelly's in their life or Jesus, or, you know, um, and then that, that brings hopelessness. Right. And it seems like either cutting or substance abuse from promiscuity, those things are the answer to not feel that way. I think, um, is it, that's the temptation. They're not the answer, but the belief is, well, maybe I can push it for a little while. Um, I have, I, I teach Bible and I have this like Bible study method that I use. And, um, one of the steps in that is identify the lie. Every time we look at a scripture yeah. verse or a passage of scripture, I, uh, part of what I teach is identify the lie because it doesn't always say, I'm um, most of the time it doesn't say the lie is right. But if the, if the, you know, if, if we're taught, taught to not worry about tomorrow, 
what is the lie in that? Well, the lie is if, if we worry enough, we can control tomorrow. Right. Or, you know, if, or, or, you know, what, and, and, and it's different maybe for different people, you know, what the lie, but I think when we can identify that, what, that, what you're saying, when you're agreeing with the lie, um, then we will make decisions that either it, it, uh, large and small that are not uh, honoring to God and are not beneficial to us as his children. Right. Yeah. So I think you're right. I think we don't talk a lot about that in, um, I mean, we never did in the churches I grew up in. It's not something that we talk a lot about. Um, and I think that that that's powerful to the darkness to not talk about it because then when we're dealing with it, we feel isolated. I think, do you? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and I hear whether, whatever it is that, I mean, a lot of times when people start behaviors, they're just trying to find relief. Oh yeah. I just want to not hurt. Right. Yeah. I just want to not hurt. Yeah. Yeah. It's a false relief. Like even substances or the, these other things, like it maybe is like a temporary thing, but really it's just causing you more pain. That's the other Mm -hmm. thing I tend to teach and, and then how to really through prayer and spending time in worship and things, how to find the healing and taking the journey of God to Mm -hmm. deal with what's really in there instead of just masking it or, or doing harmful things. So that's a really important part of my ministry. And and I think to acknowledge, I I bet you do this in your life. Like, you know, I have certain things that are going to bubble up. This is like one of the weak spots in my personality, right? Or it's from my past experiences or something that hurt really bad. That's still just going to raise its ugly head from time. And so one of the things I think is important, I bet, I bet you do this. Like, what's your plan when you're confronting that, then what's what, you know, what's on your playlist and what scriptures mean a lot to you and where can you go so that you can say, actually, this is not what I'm going to let have the power today. Right. Um, because even though I feel bad, it doesn't mean I have to like stay in there. I don't have to let it set up camp. That's what I'm like. Yeah. <laughs> so. I think, like the mindset of like versus when I'm having, cause yeah, we can, I mean, we all have, I have days yep. where I feel kind of down or depressed Yep. and, but I have learned to, instead of going into like, listen, you know, you can listen to music and do things that take you darker where yep. I get the bat. It's like almost like a battle stance where I'm like, yep. no. no. And then I fight back and that's, mm-hmm. yeah. Having the things that pull me out the other way Mm because I hate sitting in it or going farther into it. I've learned I have the power to turn and go back towards God and fight my way out of it with the help, his help. Absolutely. Make the decision Mm -hmm. to go back towards him versus going deeper into stuff. Right. Right. So what kind, I'm sure over 10 years, you've encountered some either personal obstacles, logistical, financial, maybe, or whatever. What are some (laughs) things, what are some ways that you've really just seen God be a part of this ministry and continue to affirm Uh, a few, you have more than a few stories maybe, but yeah, yeah. we'd just love to hear it because I think there are people that will be listening that are like, well, uh, you know, they're not 10 years in, if you know what I mean, in terms of like their calling or their leading. Yeah. Well, and for me, so, I mean, like I said, with chicks, I just started simple. I mean, it was just, you know, I didn't expect to have anything over the top. Um, So it didn't take much to run my ministry for a long time. But then as I started to grow in it, I feel like God started to stretch me and ask me to do more things. So like back in, I think it was 2012, all of a sudden I felt led to host a Christian concert in our high school, Carrie Roberts. I don't know if you've ever heard of her, but anyway, love her voice. And so um, I reached out and they're like, yeah, we can come, but she can only come in six weeks. And I needed to raise um, $5,000. And I'm like, God, what are you doing? And (laughs) And, but I'm like, all right, I felt like this is what I was supposed to do. So I was going around fundraising. People are like, this is not how you do this, Kelly. And I'm like, I (laughs) know, but this is what I'm doing. So can you, do you want to contribute? Yeah. Yeah, I just need to move on. If you're not going to give me money, I just got to go to the next place. Yeah. (laughs) And so I kept, so to, so that I didn't get overwhelmed. I'd be like, all right, God, I will, I know I'm on the right path. If I have a thousand dollars by this date. And and then I would have a thousand dollars. I know I like, just help me to keep going. So it, so instead of like trying to do the whole thing at once, it was just, I would ask him to just give me the next step. Cause I had to line up sound people. They ended up having to rewire the high school because the (laughs) stage was not. And, but then somebody volunteered like they, and I didn't even have to pay for it. I ended up finding out I needed event insurance, which was kind of expensive. I'm like, Oh, every time I hit an obstacle, I'd be like, God, just show me what to do. Somebody donated it. And so I I have just found when I really feel like he's, 
he's pressing on me, but I also to make sure I'm on the right path. Cause you know, sometimes you're like, okay, is this yeah. me just having an idea or is yeah. this you know, like, I want those confirmations. I was just like, ask him to show me the next step yeah. and just keep moving me along. And, and he did, we ended up having this incredible concert that felt like a mini, like really professional concert in our high school. And it was so cool. And people just showed up and, <laughs> And I just stood there like, I can't believe you actually pulled this off. And every time God has been faithful in those things that should have been impossible, it just builds my courage to just keep yeah. going. And so, you know, like a few year, I don't even remember anymore. I've got it all written down, but you're after a few years of doing my local, I started to feel like he was saying that the girls like around the world, they need you that, that mm. this is what I'm called to do is to go out and reach them. Cause I just get the rebels and the, I just get them yeah. and I love them to pieces or the girls that are just tough to deal with and the girls that are just loving and easy too, but I love them all. And so I think in those moments, like him having me do the concert and all these things where he just showed up, then it gave me the confidence. Like when I decided, when I felt like I needed a website, he connected to me to a woman in California who volunteered her time and did the whole thing for 400 bucks. It should have cost me thousands of dollars mm -hmm. when I wanted to, when all of a sudden I felt led to form my ministry into a nonprofit. I start, I asked my lawyer when we were there for a tax appointment, he goes, Oh, I'll just volunteer my time. I won't even charge you. And he just, and he had it done within, you know, it, it, like he just provides the people when it's the right time. And mm -hmm. so it just keeps growing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I love yeah, just recently I, that, um, I needed to do like a copyright on something, which I, and I just share this because it should have cost, like you said, thousands of dollars and through a, friend of a friend, a friend, you know, whatever. And I talked to this guy, Chicago lawyer, you know, I'm sure he's not way out of my league or whatever, but he learned about what I was doing. Right. You know, I talked to him and he knew what I was doing and ended up getting the bill. And it was, you know, really pennies of what it should have been, but yeah. it's, it's just the same kind of thing, you know, because I, I felt led, like, I think this is the step that I need to take for this. And so I just, you know, I just, he just opens the doors for the practical things because I think he's so, when he calls his child, and his child is willing to open their heart and life to his calling. We get so nervous about, I do with the practical things, oh, but what about this yeah. sort of event insurance? You're like, what, you know, whatever. <laughs> and he's like, oh no, no, this is about, I, I'm not going to let the event insurance or the copyright lawyer or whatever right. get in the way of what I'm trying to do through you to bless other people. Um, and uh, I just, I think that's just so encouraging. I appreciate you sharing those things with us for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So kind of, um, as we wrap up this morning, what, uh, I think there's probably whether people are listening, watching, um, whether they feel a stirring for young girls on their heart or not, like for a ministry, we are all in contact with young girls through our churches, through our kids schools, through other places, you know, um, how do we recognize the need, um, in young women and what can we do if we're not going to do chicks ministry, right? Like we're not going to start a ministry maybe, but how do we recognize and speak to that need, um, just as, as people who love Jesus and care about others? You know, I think we have to be willing, um, to look in our community. It's like, as soon as people figure out you're willing to help, a lot of times I get connected to girls really in desperate need or families in desperate need, because I'm willing to go at, like, look for a bed mm -hmm. for people. Or if you need food, I'll run to the grocery store and buy you, you know, just some of the basics. Um, I don't, it's the, I, people have figured out I'm willing to invest in them. Sure. And I think that's where it's when the momentum starts getting going, women will just call and ask for help for their daughters and things. And it doesn't have to be something, you know, I mean, you don't have to have a whole ministry, but we also, as the church have to be willing to go there. Like I have, I sat at the bedside with a mother of five children. She's dying. She died. She actually died while she was dying and she died of cancer. And then I had to sit there and weep with her children. Like we have to be, if you're going to really like get to their hearts and really change their lives, we have to be willing to get into the hard things. And sometimes it's going to break your heart. Like mm -hmm. there's been times where I've just wept with girls because I love them so much. And I, I just sit with them in their pain. I pray with them and I help walk them out of it. Because, and I think in our society so often, we think we have to have these huge platforms of these, you know, fill stadiums or yes. do all these. 
I, the greatest impacts I've had have been with the individual. Yes. Like really getting into like a, one of the young women that it's like, God just used me to rescue her out of total darkness. Her family was just destroying her with abuse and behaviors. And it was just her, the two of us um, and just absolutely loving her and just being there for her. I didn't just write a check and like, here, here's 200 bucks or a hundred bucks. And <laughs> to try to change her life. Like I actually had to, like, she would come, she had to stay at my house one night because there was, you know, a problem in her family, um, connecting her into the church community. So it's, and a lot of times the kids that will really grasp on to faith, like as hard as they can are the ones in the worst situations. And I find that God just highlights them. Like they'll start, they're hanging around or they're trying to get your attention or, you know, you just, for some reason you keep seeing them and yeah, we have to be willing to get into the hard things though, if we're going to really transform lives and pay attention, right? Because I think that there's so, uh, I, I, I appreciate so much of what you're saying just now, because I think sometimes we have this idea that to be in ministry, it needs to be somehow, um, like a formula you know, or it needs a stage or a platform or something. And you're so right that ministry is most effectively, most often, most effectively done one-on-one. And so, um, who is God revealing their need to you? Right. I mean, isn't that where something starts? Um, and, uh, and for us to not look away from that because it's messy, because a lot of times real ministry is messy and, um, and, and to trust that he will guide us when, when we see a need to ask him what I I feel something, right. Don't look away from it to sit in that little feeling and say, what would you have me do here? And, um, and I think sometimes that's, it helps one person, and that's what it's for. And sometimes then it, it sparks something like what you're doing, right? And it yeah. turns into something that so many people are benefiting from from your ministry. So. Well, and I feel like part of what I'm being called to do is I'm going to gather, like, I think God's going to use me to gather young women, but I feel like the next part of the journey is going to also be building a network of people who love young women that have a passion for them and that want to help so that when somebody from New York or somebody from Utah comes to me, I'm like, I can speak to them. We can message and build a little bit of relationship, but I'm like, Hey, here's somebody close to you. Build that connection. Here's a church that wants to support you, love on you, you know, and get that because you need community. Like I'm kind of, I feel like I'm going to be the connector. Like they'll, he'll bring them in, but then I'm going to connect them into communities that are going to come around because we all need a community. Like you need a lot of people that support that, that church family mm-hmm. to really do the journey. And so, yeah, I think that's part of what God, it's like, he's bringing them in, but this is the other part that I, I need to build the connections of other people who have heart, a heart yeah. for young women so that I can, they, yeah. they, they need it- I, I almost envision that gives me chills when you say that because it's just like I can see like local churches or community places with little like chicks ministry chapters. Wouldn't that be wonderful if you could yeah. talk to someone in another state and say, you know, the closest to you is here, you know, um, and uh, and get people connected with that because uh, I think that would be so important. Can I ask you a personal question? Um, your sure. kids are teenagers, right? Yeah. How yeah. how how are they with, and just say whatever you want to, I didn't pose this. How are they with probably some of the girls you work with, they go to school with, right. And stuff is that, yeah. how, how does that work in your home? Can I ask just yeah. from a practical, yeah. From a practical yeah. standpoint. Yeah. You know, I think because God called me, so my oldest daughter, um, was five when God really, okay. just, and then my son was only two and my, you know, yeah. youngest was a newborn. This is grown just up their, with this. Sure. This mm-hmm. is just mm-hmm. their life. Yeah. Um, they're just used to me you know, and like doing kind of things that they're like, oh my gosh, mom, I can't believe you hear Jesus there. And, but yet (laughs) laugh and they're just used to it. I, and I see, I I do, I am careful to create boundaries. I don't ever try to, so girls that I get really close to and minister to, I don't expect my kids. Sure. They don't have to be close friends with them. I mean, I expect them to love the person and to be respectful and and think of them, you know, as part of the family, but I don't expect them to hang. They're not going to, I don't force them to hang out with, you know, the girls that I build close connection with, but the ones that really, you know, stay with me, they do be, end up becoming kind of like part of our family. They'll sure. be at our house and things, but yeah, it's just been their life. I, yeah. I, they're 
used to it and they're used to me being, you know, who I am. And I, yeah. I have two boys and, um, I, uh, I have the, I have part of the ministry is where I collect boxes of pads and tampons and take them to local agencies. One of which now Love my, that. and my, one of which now is my son's high school where he's a junior now. Now he wasn't in high school when I started, you know, but yeah. he is now. And so I try really hard when I'm wheeling my like wheelbarrow thing, fill a foaming and hygiene. So I kind of look around and make sure <laughs> Alex, is that your mom? Like <laughs> with all those, it's hey. just not, I know. Alex. <laughs> <laughs> I try hard, like you said, to have some boundaries, but he, he's yeah. old, my boys, my husband and my two boys, they're, they're proud of my work. But it, at first it was a little, like, I remember my, when my son said, mom, are, is everyone going to call you the tampon lady? And I'm like, <laughs> they might, <laughs> it, might <laughs> it might be true, but I hear what you're saying where sometimes when it's our own children, you know, you need a little bit of <laughs> um, for those who are watching, listening, um, you, all, we all have young women in our lives in some way. And I really want to encourage, there's not chicks ministry chapters everywhere just yet, but the teaching that Kelly has on the website, um, which is chicksministry.org, chicksministry.org, um, is phenomenal. And I just really encourage you to encourage the young women in your life, uh, in your care to check out, uh, what Kelly does also on Instagram. A lot of young girls are on Instagram and that's, is it, I, I forget now, is it your name or is it chicks ministry that they need to look for? So the username is chicks ministry, okay. but mine is also okay. associated. Okay. okay. And Good. I'm actually going to be starting here in October. God is leading me to try to like, I'm going to get started trying to do an online chicks group where girls can, um, email me at chicks ministry at gmail.com. And I, again, I really don't know what I'm doing, but because of, you know, COVID and things with zoom and all these yes. different things, I feel like I'm supposed to connect, begin connecting and just learn. I have a feeling it'll be a small group to get started and they're just going to be like, help, you know, the ones that inform me what they need and mm. we're going to just do it. So I'm excited for that. Too. I, I am excited for you and I'm going to put the website and that email address and all that stuff in the, in the show notes and stuff. So that if, uh, if anybody wants to reach out to you, they have the information at Definitely. their hands. So, yeah. Thanks. So Kelly, thank you so much for your time today. This has been very just inspiring, encouraging. Um, we, I, I'm, I love what you're doing. Thank you so much thank for your you. heart and for your obedience and for the ways that you, you just don't even know. I know you have stories in your mind of girls that your ministry has impacted, but for every story, you know, I truly believe there are hundreds that you have no idea. And so, um, and so may you just feel blessed and may you feel God's pleasure as you continue to journey in this. Thank you so much for your time today. So thank you. And thank you. And the, and everyone who has been watching or listening, thank you. And until next time, peace. If you've listened to me for any time at all, you know I'm open about how rough my teenage years were. I was groomed into a romantic relationship with one of my high school teachers, and that sent me down a pretty dark path for a while. I thought I was unredeemable, and it took me 25 plus years to begin to believe about myself the positive things Kelly is working to teach the young women involved in Chick's ministry. What a sweet truth Kelly's words were when she reminded all of us, we were just born with value. I am so grateful that God allowed my path to cross with Kelly. I consider her a spiritual friend, and I encourage you to learn more about the work she is doing. Her website is chicksministry.org, and it is linked in today's show notes. Thank you so much for listening. I pray that wherever your day takes you, you are walking in the confident knowledge that you are a beloved, cherished child of God. Peace.